Military innovation was one of the things that he was very interested in. Um, much like with the agricultural innovation, he was a person who wanted to know better ways of doing the things that he was doing. Welcome to the Secrets of Washington's Archives. In this series, we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the George Washington Presidential Library by bringing you Inside the Vault at the Mars Rare Books and Manuscripts Suite. Today, we're looking at one of our newest acquisitions, Essays on Field Artillery by John Anderson. And here today to talk about Washington's enthusiasm for military innovations and his patronage of new and emerging military technologies is Dr. Alexandra Montgomery, manager of the Center for Digital History here at the Washington Presidential Library. So this book has a bit of an interesting history in and of itself in that it was a presentation copy given to George Washington by John Anderson. So can you tell us a little bit about who John Anderson was? Yeah, absolutely. So John Anderson uh, was Scottish and he is what is known as a natural philosopher. So natural philosophy is uh, generally thought of as the direct precursor to modern science and it is a very experimental art. So these are folks who are doing things like dropping things from a height, seeing how long it takes to land on the ground, measuring precise angles, uh, trying to discern the secrets of the natural world in the way a philosopher might try to discern the secrets of the mind, but in a way that does evolve into science. So Essays on Field Artillery, um, it is a treatise that's relatively short, and it's outlining John Anderson's solution to a problem of 18th century warfare. So field artillery, what we're talking about here is cannons. So imagine a cannon. The big guns. The big guns, the ones in the field. Um, when you fire a cannon, first of all, they take a very long time to load, if you've ever seen a presentation of this at a historical site, such as Mount Vernon. Um, and also, once they are fired, they have such a tremendous force that the recoil is very large. So they jump back, they move around, and then you have to spend a bunch of time re-aiming it, reciting it. So the number of shots you can get off is very small. So one of the ways people are trying to innovate, make this technology uh, more efficient, more um, deadly on a field of battle, is to increase the numbers of shots you can take. So John Anderson's approach to this is he has uh, discovered or um, invented or theorized a way of decreasing that recoil. And by decreasing that recoil, you can shoot guns more. And he actually sent this book directly to George Washington while Washington was president. And why would Washington be so interested, perhaps, in this type of technology? Well, uh, for two reasons. Um, George Washington, of course, is a military figure, uh, maybe, maybe first and foremost. Um, he is someone who has recently beaten the British uh, for the first time in a long time, handed the British a significant defeat. So he is known internationally as someone whose opinion you would value in terms of the military arts. He is also the president of a very young country. You know, this is the early 1790s, I believe, when John Anderson reaches out to him. The United States does not have a military infrastructure yet. Um, so being approached with this new technology that might give them an advantage, that would assist them in the creation of military structures, is going to be very attractive. And it benefited John Anderson as well because he was actually approaching George Washington for a job. He wanted to receive the title of engineer or field artillerist of the United States. He even offered to train up to 11 American boys in how to create this technology, which seems pretty exciting. But Washington too seemed pretty interested in it. He actually wrote that he wished there could be some great inducement to bring Anderson over from Scotland, but it ultimately didn't come to fruition. Why is that? Yes, and unfortunately this was just the latest of a line of similar incidents for Anderson. He had previously brought this to revolutionary France, before that he brought it to Britain, brings it to the Americas. In all these cases he's getting some interest, but no, no buy-in, no follow-through, the deal doesn't close. And this is for a number of reasons. First and foremost is probably just cost. Um, you know, this wouldn't be cheap. You can imagine a lot of people would see this and say, you know, actually the cannons we have are fine for this limited amount of improvement. It's not worth spending this amount of money. Um, Anderson was also British himself. Maybe there was some discomfort about bringing in British people, you know, this close to the end of the war. But also he was quite elderly by this point. He died not too long after this. And this book too is something that Anderson himself had printed. So this isn't a book that was say published and sold in shops. It was actually quite rare and it's very difficult to find copies of this book today. But we now have here at the Washington Presidential Library, the copy that Anderson sent Washington 
himself, which is really exciting when you think about it. Mm -hmm. No, it's always exciting when we get Washington books. And again, this is part of a very important part of Washington's life when he is a major public figure and he is receiving lots of different books from lots of different people. That was an important part of what it was to be Washington in that moment. If you want to learn more about George Washington's military leadership and what we can learn about it today, be sure to check out our podcast companion, also titled The Secrets of Washington's Archives, available wherever you download your favorite podcasts. Go to georgewashingtonpodcast.com to learn more.